Once upon a time, there lived three little pigs in a cozy farmhouse with their mother. One day, Mama Pig called her children together and said, Okay, little pigs, you are all grown up. It's time for you to go out into the world and build houses of your own. But beware of the big bad wolf. Build your houses safe and strong, for if he catches you, he'll gobble you up. So the three little pigs set out on their journey, and they first came to a field of straw. The first little pig saw the bales of straw and said, Why, I'll stack this straw into a house nice and quick. And so he said goodbye to his brother and his sister. And in no time at all, he had built a house of straw and he went inside to relax. The next two pigs, they continued on their journey until they came to a forest. Looking around at all of the sticks of the forest, the second little pig said, why, I'll use these sticks to build a house that's much stronger than straw. And plus, it'll take me no time at all. So the second little pig set to work on her house of sticks. It took her a little longer, but in no time she was finished and went into her house to relax. Now, the third little pig was growing very tired, but he continued on the journey until he came to a small town. And he looked around and he saw that there were lots of houses built of bricks. And he thought to himself, why, I'll build a house of bricks that's sturdy and strong. And so he set to work and he worked long and hard on this house. But at last, he finally finished and had a strong house of bricks, and he went inside to relax. Now, just a few days later, the three little pigs heard that the big bad wolf was seen nearby. And remembering their mother's warning, the three little pigs, they went inside their house and hid from the wolf, hoping to be safe. Now, the big bad wolf was out hunting for his dinner and sniffing around until he caught the scent of the first little pig who was hiding inside his house of straw. That hungry wolf, he walked right up to the door and he knocked on the door and he said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. Huddled nervously inside, the first little pig cried out, not by the hairs on my chinny chin chin. The big bad wolf showed his long, sharp teeth and he said, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he took a deep breath and blew as hard as he could. And the house of straw flew to pieces with bits of straw flying everywhere, leaving that first little pig with no protection from the wolf. And so he squealed and he ran as fast as he could through the forest to his sister's house of sticks. And together they hid from the wolf. Well, that wolf was growing very hungry and so he chased after that little pig through the forest until he got to the house of sticks. He growled and he knocked on the door and he said, little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. And the two little pigs, they hugged each other and they cried out, not by the hairs on our chinny chin chins. Oh, that big bad wolf was very hungry. He licked his lips and rubbed his belly and he growled, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he took a deep breath and blew as hard as he could. And that house of sticks, it shook, but it didn't break. And so the big bad wolf took another big deep breath and blew as hard as he could and that house of sticks flew to pieces, leaving the two little pigs with nothing to protect them from the wolf. And so they squealed and they ran as fast as they could through the forest and into town to hide in their brother's house of bricks. Oh, but the big bad wolf, he chased those little pigs through the forest and into town. And he got to that door and he rapped on it and he growled, little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. 
And the three little pigs huddled inside. They cried out, not by the hairs on our chinny chin chins. The big bad wolf, he growled, then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he took a big deep breath and blew as hard as he could. But that house of bricks, it stood strong. Oh, the big bad wolf, he took a bigger, deeper breath and blew as hard as he could, but the house of bricks, it didn't budge. The third little pig, he laughed with pride and he said, listen here, wolf, my house of bricks is much too strong to be blown down. And now it's your turn to run. There are no bullies allowed in this town. And so the three little pigs, they burst out of their house and all the other animals in the village did as well. And so together, the three little pigs and all their friends, they chased that big bad wolf right out of town. And he never bothered the three little pigs ever again. <laughs> the end. Once upon a time, there lived a fisherman. He lived in a tiny shack by the ocean and worked hard every day to catch enough fish to feed his many children. One day, as the fisherman cast his line into the water, he felt a tug. And he reeled in his catch. When all of a sudden, caught on his hook, the fisherman discovered a golden fish, unlike any fish he had ever seen before. However, the fisherman's surprise grew when the golden fish opened its mouth and began to speak. Please, said the golden fish, release me from your hook. Set me free in the water and I will grant you whatever you wish. The fisherman had not caught many fish that day, but still he took pity on the golden fish and decided to let him free. As soon as the golden fish was safe in the water, it turned to the fisherman and said, Thank you, sir, for setting me free. Now, what is it that you wish? And I will make it be. The fisherman thought of his family, crowded into their old rundown shack, and he knew what to wish for. Golden fish, I wish for a nice big house for my family. And so it will be, said the golden fish. I hope you enjoy your wish. And if you ever need me, call out to the waves and I will come. The fisherman hurried home to tell his family about the golden fish. When he arrived, he couldn't believe his eyes. Where once stood his tiny shack, there was now a big, beautiful house with plenty of room for his many children. The fisherman told his family all about his wish for a new house, which the golden fish had clearly granted. For a while, the fisherman's family lived happily in their home. But before long, the fisherman's sons and daughters began to complain. Dad, why didn't you ask for a bigger house? We want a mansion with fine clothes and fancy things. So the fisherman hurried back to the ocean and called out to the golden fish. With a splash, the golden fish peeked its head out of the water. I see you've returned, said the fish. What is it that you need? Well, said the fisherman, thank you for the house. But what we really need is an enormous mansion filled with fancy clothes and fine things. And so it will be, said the golden fish. I hope that this time you truly enjoy your wish. But if you ever need my help, call out to the waves and I will come. The fisherman ran back to his family and found an enormous mansion filled with the fanciest clothes and the finest things that he and his family could have ever imagined. The fisherman and his family lived in their mansion and for a while, they were happy. However, not very long after, the fisherman's sons and daughters began to complain again. Dad, why didn't you ask the golden fish for a palace? We want a golden palace and a kingdom to rule too. And so the fisherman returned to the ocean 
and called out to the golden fish. And with a splash, the golden fish emerged from the water. <gasps> I see you've returned again, said the golden fish. What could you possibly need now? Well, said the fisherman, I wanted to thank you for the mansion, but what we really need is a castle and a great big kingdom to rule. Ah, said the golden fish. I think I know exactly what your family needs. Go, fisherman, and do not call me again. So the fisherman hurried back home, but when he arrived, there was no castle. There was no mansion, not even a house. All that remained was a tiny shack. And so the fisherman ran back to the ocean and pleaded and begged for the golden fish to return. But the golden fish never appeared again. And so the fisherman and his family, they returned to their tiny shack by the ocean. And they had no fancy clothes and no fine things. But they had each other. And that was what the golden fish said. That, indeed, was exactly what they needed. The, the end. end. Once upon a time, there was a rabbit, or hare, as his friends in the forest liked to call him. Now, the hare loved hopping along the forest trail and talking about how fast he was. One day, as the hare was bouncing along, he zoomed past the squirrels. So long, squirrels, I'm faster than you, laughed the hare. As he continued on, he zoomed past the snakes. So long, snakes, I'm so much faster than you. As the sun was beginning to set, the hare tripped over the tortoise, who was slowly plodding along the forest trail. Tortoise, you're so slow, I thought you were a rock. You must be the slowest animal in the forest, and I am the fastest. The tortoise cautiously peeked her head out of her shell. Hare, you're always bragging about how fast you are, but did you ever think how it makes your friends feel when you call them slow? Since you're so fast, I challenge you to a race. What? <laughs> the hare laughed. Tortoise, you couldn't beat a tree stump in a race. Laugh all you want, replied the tortoise, but I'll see you tomorrow for our race. So, the next morning, the hare came early to see all the forest animals gathered to watch the race. Okay, said the tortoise, we'll race down the path, through the field, and the finish line will be at the meadow. Let's go, replied the hare as he stretched his long, strong legs. The race began and the hare took off in a dash, leaving the tortoise behind. Do you give up yet, called the hare. I won't give up, replied the tortoise. Slow and steady will win the race. So it wasn't long before the hare reached the field where he saw rows and rows of carrots. And the hare thought to himself, hmm, I woke up so early to get to the race, I didn't have time for breakfast. That tortoise is so slow, I can eat all these carrots and still win the race. So the hare decided to stop for a snack. He ate as many carrots as he could, and after a long while, the tortoise slowly came up on the hare. What took you so long, said the hare to the tortoise, as he took off in a dash, leaving the tortoise in a cloud of dust. But the tortoise didn't give up because she knew that slow and steady would win the race. It wasn't long before the hare reached the meadow. He could see all the forest animals waiting at the finish line. Just then, he felt the warm sun beating down on his tummy. And he called out to the animals, that tortoise is so slow, I could take a nap and still win the race. So, the hare decided to lay down in the soft grass. Shortly after, his eyes slipped closed and he was fast asleep. But the tortoise didn't give up. She kept plodding along the trail because she knew that slow and steady would win the race. All the animals gasped. Could the tortoise really win the race? The hare woke up from all the commotion and dashed towards the finish line. But he was too late. The tortoise won the race with one slow step over the finish line. All the animals cheered for the tortoise, but the hare cried, that's not fair. I'm the 
fastest animal in the forest. You are really fast, Hare, but you have a little to learn about being a good friend. Good race! The hare was so surprised that the tortoise didn't brag or tease about winning. Good race, replied the hare. You didn't give up. And you were right. Slow and steady did win the race. And the hare led all the forest animals in another round of cheers for his friend tortoise. Congratulations, friend. And the hare never teased anyone again. The end. Once upon a time, there was a lion. Now this lion was the biggest, strongest, fiercest beast in all the jungle. And all the animals knew not to bother lion, especially when he curled up in the shade for his afternoon nap. However, one afternoon, a teeny tiny little mama mouse was scurrying around looking for food for her babies. And she didn't see the lion sleeping. And so as she hurried along, her long tail brushed the nose of the lion. <gasps> Achoo! Sneezed the lion, very grumpy to have been woken from his nap. He glared down at that teeny tiny mouse who was frozen in fear and he roared, how dare you disturb me, he said. I should gobble you up. <gasps> I'm so sorry, squeaked the mouse, please let me go. And for your kindness, I will promise to help you whenever you are in need. Oh. Ha ha ha, roared the lion. How could a teeny tiny mouse like you ever help a great big lion like me? And he waved his paw at the little mouse. Run along, little mouse, you're much too silly to eat. And so she ran home to her babies. Now, the lion went about his business and he soon had forgotten all about that little mouse. But. Just a couple days later, the great big lion stepped into a hunter's trap and all of a sudden he was tangled in a giant net. He pushed and pulled with all of his strength, but his struggle only made the net grow tighter. And he roared and he roared, his great cries echoing throughout the land. But all of the other animals were afraid of the hunters, and so they didn't dare help poor lion. All of the animals, that is, except the little mouse who had not forgotten the lion's kindness. When she heard the lion's cries, she rushed out of her house and she cried, hurry, to her little babies. It sounds as if lion is in trouble and, well, well, maybe we could help. And so the mama mouse led the way with her little baby scampering behind her. And they soon encountered the enormous lion who was trapped inside the hunter's net. Don't worry, lion, we're here to help, said the little mouse. Oh, that's very kind of you, little mouse, said the lion. But even I, with my great strength, can't escape this net. What could a tiny creature like you do to help? Have no fear, said the mouse. I will save you just like you saved me. And with a squeak, she called to her little babies and they all approached the net. And with their teeny tiny teeth, each mouse began to nibble at the net. They nibbled and they gnawed at those big, thick ropes, and it took all day and all night. But just as the sun was rising, the net fell to pieces and the lion was free. You saved me, roared the lion, as he smiled down at the mama mouse and her babies. I'm sorry that I laughed at you, little mouse. I will not forget your kindness or bravery. You've shown me that even the smallest friends can be the greatest friends of all. And from that day forward, the great big lion and the teeny tiny mouse were always the best of friends. The end. 
Swim closer, children. I have a story for you. Story time! <laughs> tell it, tell it. I will, I will. Okay. Once upon a time, very, very deep in the clear blue sea, there lived a little mermaid. I know the story. Maybe. But this story has been told by humans and merfolk for hundreds of years. And every time it's told, it's a little bit different. Tell it, please. <laughs> OK. So this little mermaid lived with her big sisters and her father. King Triton, ruler of the ocean. That's right. Her father ruled over all the creatures of the ocean. That is, except the wicked sea witch who was jealous of his power. Now, this little mermaid was a bright, thoughtful girl who was always asking questions about the world above the ocean. She carefully collected and studied all of the land objects that sank down to the ocean floor, like a ship's anchor, a fork, and especially a statue of a boy who had no fish tail, but instead two long legs on which to stand. At last, the Little Mermaid came of age and was allowed to rise up and explore the surface of the ocean. And there she saw an enormous ship where a human prince was celebrating his birthday as well. The Little Mermaid watched in wonder. A terrible storm struck, and the crashing waves knocked the prince from his ship. But the brave Little Mermaid battled the waves and swam with the prince to a nearby beach. Once the prince was safe on shore, the Little Mermaid sang him a song more beautiful than any human had ever heard before. But. Just as the prince was about to open his eyes, a search party of humans arrived and the Little Mermaid leapt back into the sea. So the prince never got to see who saved his life. That's right. But the prince was determined to find this brave young woman whose beautiful voice he would never forget. And the Little Mermaid, who had also fallen in love with the prince, was now more determined than ever to find a way to live on land. Sea Witch! <laughs> That's right! The Little Mermaid went to the Sea Witch and begged her for a way to become human. The Sea Witch agreed to give the Little Mermaid legs, but only if the Little Mermaid gave the witch her beautiful voice. And worse, if the prince did not return the Little Mermaid's love and ever married another, the Little Mermaid would have to return to the ocean and belong to the Sea Witch. Why would she agree to that? Well, the Little Mermaid was brave and determined, and she might not have thought through all of the bad things that could happen. Plus, she was in love. Ew. <laughs> in any case, the Little Mermaid agreed to the Sea Witch's deal and was given legs. And finally able to leave the ocean, the Little Mermaid was thrilled to be able to explore the wide world above. She met the prince, who thought that there was something special about this young woman. Although she could no longer speak to tell the prince that she was the one who saved his life. Still, the prince welcomed the Little Mermaid into his palace, where he was struck by her kindness, her sense of humor, and especially her interest in absolutely everything. Uh-oh. That's right. The sea witch grew worried that the prince would marry the little mermaid, so she used her wicked magic to give a visiting princess the little mermaid's voice. And upon hearing that beautiful voice, the prince thought that he had found the young woman who saved his life, and so he made plans to marry the human princess. Couldn't she write him a note or draw a picture or something? Well, the Little Mermaid did have one possibility. The Little Mermaid's sisters had gone to the Sea Witch and given her all of their beautiful hair 
in exchange for a dagger, which the Little Mermaid could use to stab the human princess and stop the wedding. But even though the Little Mermaid knew that she would have to return to the ocean and belong to the sea witch, the Little Mermaid would not hurt the human princess. On the day of the wedding, the sea witch came to claim the Little Mermaid, but the brave Little Mermaid used the magical dagger to stab the sea witch. And with that blow, the sea witch lost her power over the Little Mermaid and her voice returned. And the prince realized that it was the Little Mermaid who had saved him. And together, they battled the sea witch the sea witch was defeated. That's right. The little mermaid was able to stay human and she and the prince became wonderful rulers over their kingdom on land. But they also liked visiting her family's kingdom under the sea. And they lived happily ever after? <laughs> yes, they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> mm, that story was okay. Do you know any scarier ones? Hmm, well, once upon a time. Mother Goose Club Playhouse.